हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ई लर्निंग अरेंज बाय सेंसेवियर स्कूल आदिपुर ड्यूरिंग पेंडेमिक सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन एंड स्टेइंग सेफली लॉक्ड इन इज अ न्यू वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर व्हिच इज फॉर आवर वेलबीइंग वी एट जेवियर्स हैव ऑलवेज risen up and stood up to the occasion and have found ways to stand by our children in by finding different ways for their overall development through e learning we are here for you and with you always i hima nayo will be taking your mathematics class for standard 8 before i start with my explanation i would like you children to keep a notebook with you so that you can note down the important points and also work out the sums and the problems done during the class you will also be given some homework to be done at home which has to be noted down in your notebook and have to be submitted when ever we meet personally and i hope which is very soon in rational numbers the topics which we will cover will be introduction of natural rational numbers properties of rational numbers properties of rational numbers closure property associative property commutative property distributive property some special properties like roll of zero roll of one additive inverse multiplicative inverse how to represent a rational number on the number line and how to find rational numbers between the given two rational numbers before we start let us take a quick look at what all we have studied before we have studied about natural numbers natural numbers are those numbers which we use for counting that is we always start our counting with 1 2 3 isn't it we never start with zero we start with one so the set of natural numbers is denoted by capital letter n and is and its smallest natural number is 1 natural number along with zero are called whole numbers which is denoted by a capital letter w which is the set of whole numbers is from 0 1 2 3 and so on negative numbers zero and the positive numbers are called integers now you look at one thing all the natural numbers are the subset of whole numbers all the whole numbers are subset of integers so whatever is the property of the natural numbers the whole numbers will have that property and something more same way whatever is the property of the natural number and the whole number will be the properties of integers and maybe something more so we'll come to that later on now our main rational numbers what are rational numbers you have to note down this definition from your textbook which is given on page number 3 under the topic rational numbers the numbers which can be represented in the form of p upon q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 are called rational numbers for example minus 2 upon 3 3 upon 5 7 upon 8 8 minus 4 1.5 etc now etc the main condition is both p and q are integers both p and q are integers and one important condition is q should not be equal to 0 what happens if it is equal to 0 suppose i take 8 upon 0 8 upon 0 is not defined 
you cannot define it. Why defined? Why you cannot define it? Because that is equal to infinity. So q cannot be equal to 0. It can be any other integer other than 0. That is what it means. Then you say that 8. Why 8? It is not represented in the form of p upon q. Yes, we have just written here 8. But 8, we can write this 8 as 8 upon 1. This minus 4 as minus 4 upon 1. This 1.5 as 15 upon 10. They all can be represented in the form of p upon q. So hence, they all are rational numbers. So rational numbers is denote, set of rational numbers is denoted by a capital letter Q and it is equal to, if I take Q is equal to, it will contain all the negative numbers One, two, three, or I can say uh, three upon two also. They all are rational numbers. So rational numbers contains natural numbers also, whole numbers also, and integers also. Now let's come to our next topic. Properties of rational numbers. Which properties? We have already learned about the properties of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers in our previous classes. Like closure property, commutative property, associative property, distributive property, and as I told you, some special properties like roll of 0, roll of 1, roll of uh, 0 in case of natural numbers. Then multiplicative inverse, additive inverse, all these properties you have learned about natural numbers, whole numbers and integers. In this, the same thing we are going to learn for rational numbers. But let us take a quick look. First, what is closure property? Closure property is that if I am considering natural number, for any three numbers A, B and C, here they all are natural, then A plus B is equal to C, then this C should also be a natural number. Then I call, call that as that for natural number, the closure property is closed under addition. Now, what does this sentence mean? Closed under addition. That means closure property of natural number holds true for the operation addition, under the operation addition. That means just, I'll take here in this table. We are going to consider four operations, that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now let us take closure property for natural numbers. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. This is a natural number. This is a natural number. This number, the resultant number, that is the C, should also be a natural number. So here 5 is a natural number. So this property is closed for addition for natural number. So here it is closed for addition. So I'll put a tick mark here for you to understand. Now here 2 minus 3 for subtraction. You get minus 1 but minus 1 is not a natural number. So closure property for subtraction is not closed under subtraction. Not closed means does not hold true for the operation subtraction. Here, 2 into 3 is equal to 6. That means 2 is a natural number, 3 is a natural number, the resultant number should also be a natural number. So this property, 2 into 3 is equal to 6, holds true for multiplication. But here, the resultant number is not a natural number, so it does not hold true 
or you can say is not closed under division. Similarly, for whole number, 2 into 3 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, so holds true. Again, the same thing, 2 is a uh, whole number, 3 is also a whole number, but this is not a whole number. So, it does not hold true for subtraction. It holds true for multiplication. It does not hold true for division. This you have already studied, so I am just going through it. Now, integers. Integers also 2 minus 3. Suppose I take because 2 plus minus 3 if I take. 2 plus minus 3. What do I get? Minus 1. It is an integer. So it holds true for addition. Here 2 minus minus 3. What do I get? 5. So again it is an integer. So it holds true for subtraction also. It will hold true for multiplication also. But it will not hold true for division. Similarly, for rational numbers also, rational number, closure property for rational number here is closed under addition, not closed under, it is closed under subtraction, closed under multiplication, but not closed under division. So here 2 upon 3 plus 5 upon 3, 7 upon 3. 7 upon 3 is a rational number? Yes. So here even if you get a natural number or a whole number, they all are into the set of rational numbers. They are also rational numbers. So for addition, it will hold true. For subtraction, it will hold true. For multiplication, it will hold true. But for division, it will not because sometimes you may get a rational number or you may not get a rational number. Suppose here, 2 upon 3 divided by 3. What do you get? You get 2. But that is a rational number. So here you can say it holds true. But here 2 upon 3 divided by 0. So 2 upon 3 into 0, 2 upon 0 is not defined. So when the denominator is 0, it is divided by 0, then it is not defined, it does not hold true. So, closure property for rational number is closed under addition, subtraction and multiplication but not closed under division. This, now I hope you are very clear. So, you have to do a table. You have to complete the table which is given on page number 4 of your textbook. See, this is your textbook. And you can take this as your work at home. You can revise. At the same time, on page number 3 and page number 4, some sentences are written in italics. You will also note down those points in your notebook under the heading points to remember. This point written in italics. Here it is written in italics. Here it is written in italics. Whatever is written in italics in your textbook on page number 3 and page number 4, you have to write down under points to remember in your text, uh, notebook. Sorry, in your notebook. I hope I am very clear.